This video is entirely sponsored and supported by PCBWay, who kindly printed this for me. And you're probably asking the question, so what is this? Well, why don't we open it up and find out? So considering there are so many aftermarket cases for machines like the Amiga 500 and Amiga 1200, the lowly Atari ST, which actually suffers from some serious case decay and deficiencies in that they become incredibly brittle, there is no placement case available on the market. And it seemed to me one of the obvious solutions to that problem is, can we 3D print one? <laughs> this is looking. It's green. I know it's green. Well, this is basically the first Atari ST case I've seen in one piece. The print quality of this case is incredible. It's not warped or bent in any way. There's no imperfections on the surface. So my Atari ST FM gets a new case. There are a couple of things on this case that aren't perfect. It's missing the indent for the case badge and the little cutouts for the LEDs where little plastic windows are installed on the original case. So the question is, can I get the original Atari ST to fit in this case? You can see this case is for an Atari STF because it doesn't have a hole for the modulator on the back and we have the big button floppy. I don't have a big button floppy drive but what I think I'm going to do for this is to install a GoTech, which sort of solves the problem. I don't have much in the way of original discs for the Atari ST, and it's much more compatible with things like zip drives, so getting software on and off of this machine shouldn't be a problem. But before we can put anything into this new case, I need to take some things out of my original Atari 520 STFM. The reason I'm putting the 520 ST in this is because that is a ST case, not an STE case, because the standard ST doesn't have the extended joystick ports on the side. So let's get everything out of this, get rid of this huge piece of bubble wrap, and take it from there. Taking apart the Atari ST, you only need to take the screws out that are in the square holes. If you start taking out the ones in the round holes, you're going to find you've got a floppy drive falling out on you. Ask me how I know. One of the things I might do is swap this lid with the one on the 140 STE. Hopefully swap the batch across, but it's not quite as beaten up as the one that's on it. A test of this case design should be, I should be able to take this top and it fit somewhat over the top and and that does it appear to be the case. No pun intended. I was thinking for a moment I wouldn't need to take this shield off, but we have a modulator in it. And this is already loose, so it's probably half hanging off the board anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that modulator, because removing the modulator is something I'm not going to actually use versus trying to drill a hole in the new case in the right place feels like the better option like somebody's been in here before under here the front tab on that's not even soldered in as well as providing excellent 3d printing services pcb way author pcb prototyping for as little as five dollars So you can see I've removed all the solder around the edge. So a bit of a curious technique, but it, it kind of works. So we've got these three locations here. I'll just put some fresh solder in those. I'm still at 405 on the soldering iron and 430 on the desolder station. Mugun, whatever you want to call it. Well, that smells of flux. That's got decades old flux on it. It's probably just flowing straight through the board. Mm -hmm. 
nicely desoldered so they're no longer attached. There we go. That's the modulator removed. Simple as that. But there we have the green freshly printed case. All came pretty good apart from that centre tab. It looks like that gets us all the way home and that is a perfect fit. So it's just that one peg. Now, while I've got it out, do I have a turn around? Be rude not to. While I've got the board out, I think we should put those in. So what you need to do to upgrade this RAM is install the socket, well, install sockets or chips directly to the board, decoupling caps, which are 0.22 microfarad or 220 nanofarad. And normally I've seen people that don't have these three resistors here. On my board, those are already installed, so I don't need to install them. That's one less thing to do. So I've got some brand new capacitors for decoupling. They're not quite the same style, but they should fit perfectly. And I'm going to put sockets in because I've got the sockets and I'm not entirely sure I've got compatible RAM. I need to go and look for that. So if I put the sockets in, if I haven't got RAM, I can put it all back together and uh, all I have to do in the future is bulb the chips in. So just to make sure those are going to sit nicely side by side, and they are. So now we're going to do some soldering. Absolutely had some of them in stock, so there it is, installed. So now we've got one meg of RAM making this now an Atari 1040 ST. Right, so back to putting this in its green case. So that peg there I'm struggling to get the case lid to fit and it appears to be fouling on the keyboard so I'll take a little look at this and get back to you. Now that fits perfectly. My original plan with this Atari ST case was to paint it, but to be honest, I kind of like the green. And I'm a bit weird when it comes to case colours, but this is kind of cool. I suppose the jury's really out on to whether I'll paint it or not. We can always do that at a future stage. The colour I was looking to paint it was this shade of grey the same as my IBM 5170. 
If you come back to looking at the original case, you'll notice that, in fact, this center tab doesn't exist, and neither does the one at the side. And on the top of the case, the profile on the keyboard supports is slightly further back, suggesting the keyboards on the earlier machines were a slightly different size. So I've got the GoTek installed in the ST, but it's a bit of a tighter fit than most people would like. This probably isn't going to be the final solution, but it's good enough to do some testing. So again, thanks to PCBWay for funding this print and providing something that is such high quality. Well, if you've got a strong feeling about what the colour of this Atari ST should be, then please leave that in the comments below. And if you found any part of this video entertaining or informative, then please click like. And if you'd like more videos like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free and it means you'll get notifications the next time I post a video. But in the meantime, why don't you check this out next?